Christmas trees in all sizes and all prices. Making a bonsai out of Christmas tree. Right, welcome. This is Janne, growing bonsai. A few weeks ago, I asked on my channel in a little poll what I should do with Christmas trees that are for sale. And actually, you disappointed me. The answers were so diverse that I have no option but to do multiple things. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this Christmas tree into a formal upright. I'm going to change this Christmas tree in a twisted cascading little plant. Keep in mind, if you want to work on it in the winter, don't leave it outside. Put it in a shed where it's frost free, because working on branches that are completely frozen, that's not a good idea. If you also have Christmas trees like this and you are done with the trees for Christmas, you can do this yourself. Of course, make sure you take all the decorations out before you start working on the tree. I need to thin it out, I need to remove the inner needles and then wire out the branches. I don't want any branches in the lowest, maybe 20%. Regular scissors, a wire clipper, another wire clipper, concave cutters. That's pretty much it. So I want something that stands on slope of a hill and therefore the first branch can be quite low compared to the ground. For this work I don't need all that much material. I've got copper wire in a few sizes. I'm using copper because Picea is quite annoying. It always wants to get back into the original shape. So you wire it and then you can easily leave the wire on for a year. The tree splits in two. Um, I'm going to go for the side that has most branches and is thickest at the base. So the left one is going to stay and the right one is going away. When you're cleaning out a tree like this, it is often difficult to decide um, what to keep and what not. So I always start with just general cleanup. Look, a little thing that's sitting here on the trunk is never going to be used in the final styling. So all that little stuff you can just remove from the trunk. Here there's a whole cluster of tiny little things. I'm just going to leave one of them that comes to the outside, the one growing up, I'm going to remove. Uh, meanwhile, I'm cleaning out all the old needles here. So for the trees, I'm uh, thinking about trees that are growing on a cliff. Something, so say we have a cliff. If there is this huge, big tree, right? It is uh, old, mature. It has some branches. Lower down, there is something that is basically standing in the fall of the rocks, like that. So this is something that I have in my mind when I'm working on the tree. This is the big one, this is the small one. The pure attachment, the first few centimeters here, they can be completely bare in the final tree. So we don't need to leave anything here. And it does help us understand the placement of the branches. The thing about Picea is that all the side branches typically grow in groups, in whorls. So at each individual level of a branch, there's not just one branch, but there might be several branches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce all these whorls to one or two branches. Yes, one or two, because I want to be able to select later during wiring. Now this tree seems to have two main trunks. There's a big lump of branches going here off to the side and then there's another one and actually there's a third one. So I'm going to thin this out drastically. I don't want all that much material. It's going to be planted like this. So this is going to be the top. This is going to come down. The top doesn't need to be all that high so I can take the middle out here as well. The lower ones are going to be quite long. I want to keep quite a bit here. But again there is a double branching here and I'm going to remove that out as well. Just thin it out. There's way too many branches in one of these. Um, in the end, we want a tree and trees are quite bare. Completely at the bottom, they can also go. Competing, then I have a side branch here, but I don't need a side branch here. Here there's a side branch going in. I don't want that one. Right, I think that's it. I've removed a lot of branches. Um, as you can tell, these things are quite affordable. Anybody can get one of these. And that leaves me with a branch down low. I've got two trunks. One is going to go be bent down and the other is going to come up. Um, this one might go or that one might go. Now it is key to remove all the needles from the main stems. I'm still going to leave them on the side stems, but the main stems should be completely devoid of needles. Otherwise, it just looks like the young plant it is. Ready for wiring. What I've done. All the needles are removed. This is the main trunk. I'm going to plant it in like this. So this is going to be a canopy. This branch I'll leave. 
for the back or that one. This one might still go, but first let me wire this out with thin copper wire. With most of the branches that I want to keep wired out, um, it's time to set and prune the last branches. As I said, it's going to be planted roughly like this. New top, a first branch, and then this should go a little bit more like this. This is the cascading branch with a few branches here at the bottom, all of which need to grow out. This one can just go, I'm not going to use it. This one I can split here at an intersection. Interesting to see. If you're pruning Picea, look for side branches between the needles and clip at a side branch. That way you ensure you have buds later on. A little bit long. Important if you're bending branches that you try to bend it right at the connection point to the trunk. So here this one is going to go down. So it's not coming up and then down, it's going to go straight away down in the flow from the trunk, down and out and then up. And here at the tip as well, this needs to go down and come up a little bit. Down and come up a little bit, come on. This one also, I wanted to go down and then come back up and then prune back to a side branch here. There is a branch here, going to the side, this one. There's a branch coming to the front. There's another one going to the side, there's one in the back, there's one going up and there's another one going up. So I'm going to remove this small one, I'm not going to use it. Here there's two branches. This one is better than that one because it has more side branches. So this one can go. Now I'm left with the choice, one, two, three branches. If I say that this is one that's going to be used, or this, this one's not, because it's straight over this one. I'm going to remove that one. Then this one is in the same height as the other, so I'm going to remove this one as well. And I'm going to keep that one until I'm wiring out. So this is the way that I go through the whole tree. Big chunk of the tree is going up. Wouldn't it be nice if everybody tries to do something with a Christmas tree? Magnus at uh, Green Machine Sweden, he created out of this sort of material a nice forest a couple of years ago. I'll link to it in the description. Magnus, could I get you to also make one of these this Christmas? Show us how you went ahead making the forest, but maybe now just on one tree. Blue Jay Bonsai and anybody else who wants to. Do you have time? Do you have a tree? Make a video, put the results online and I'll create a playlist with all these videos in there. So. The tree is a lot smaller. Um, as said, I've removed all the inner branches and I've removed branches that are double or triple in the same spot. No, trying to leave options for styling. What I've done also, one side trunk, two side trunk, three, four side trunks were removed. Now it is just a matter of wiring out all the branches and as I wire them out, I position them and decide which one is next. As you can see, I've left quite a few branches in the top. That's because I'm not sure yet what it's going to look like. This will happen during the styling, as I'm wiring and positioning. 
you create a rhythm in the tree that looks natural. Okay, that's enough for today. Um, sun is setting, there's a little drizzle coming down and it's basically just unpleasant outside. So I'm going to put this inside. Um, I'm not sure when I have a chance to continue with this video and this tree. It might very well be that I'm then inside in the shed with poor light. Oh well. As you can see, the main branches up to this point have now been wired. Um, what I'm going to do next is I still need to wire this part and I'm going to trim back. Right, the little drizzle, the darkness, it's all gone now. It's frozen, it's still about minus five Celsius and I've put the tree in the shed and I misjudged the temperatures. This shed normally stays reasonably frost free but with minus 10 also here it starts to freeze. So now I've heated this up a little bit. I've put the heater on this morning for an hour. It's frost free, the tree is thawed out a little bit. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of basic pruning. Thaw should start overnight. Tomorrow morning I can start wiring again. These uh, spruce branches, they might look like they're just singular branches without anything on them but needles. But if you look carefully, you see there's a butt there, there's a butt there, there's a terminal butt and there's butts on the inside. So when pruning, make sure that you prune at a butt. Same here. So go through the tree like that, you create a shortened branch. Make it in a profile that you get around the tree. Don't get a triangle, but also the top. It needs to be a little bit rounded. Make sure the branches are not all in the same length. You want some shorter, you want some longer, so it is a little bit of an uneven profile. Note, I'm taking care to not cut any of the needles. Um, you can of course just cut perpendicular, but then you're going to damage many needles. I try to go in between the needles and then cut. I'm now going to wire out most of these little side branches. I am not going to remove any needles from the branches. Normally I would, but I'm hoping for some back budding. It is the middle of winter and in spring I'm going to repot it. I'm going to repot it in spring, not now. I know you could potentially repot now, but why bother, right? Just leave it until spring. Let me take a look, see whether I've got a pot. There we go. It is a very, very shallow tray. It is a landscape tray. And if that is underneath this, it might look just like a little landscape with a tree on it. So this might be a good candidate for this spring to repot. But watch the channel, subscribe. Actually, if you like this video, hit the like button. It's for free. In spring, I'll repot and I'll show you what I do. I'm going to get started. I don't know what you think about wiring, but I think it is very, very boring. Watching somebody wire out a tree, I've got better things in life to do. So I'm just going to wire this out off camera and I'll get back to you when I've wired the branches and I'm starting to set it in place. Until then, I'm going to switch on my radio, drink my tea, wire it out, and I'll be right back with you. All wired out. Most of the branches have been wired. Some branches still need to be removed. Let's start positioning. So what I've done, I've not wired every single branch, uh, but I've wired just enough branches to get a few pads going. As said before, I want fairly steep hanging branches and I want all the bends to be right at the trunk line. And now it's a matter of taking every side branch that is wired and also fluffing those out a little bit so that you get a bit of structure. And long branches I can still reduce. Of course, making sure that if there's wire on it that I don't cut through the wire. 
Um, effectively, this is roughly what I'm after here. Something like this. Now some branches, like this one, have very long branches and I can also put these lower, that they form their own little platform. Reduce these a little bit. Reduce this one here, how far have I wired? All the way. Effectively, this is what I'm going to do for all the branches in the whole tree. All done. This is now ready to go back into the garden, but for the next couple of weeks I don't want to give it any frost. These branches have been bent around, they've been clipped. They need a bit of off time. A little quick look. The whole tree from all sides. It's fairly nice and filled. Um, one of the key things to remember is try to get the angle at the trunk quite steep, no loops up and down. As the branches go towards the top it can be a little bit less steep but not too much. If you have multiple branches create individual tiny little pads and yeah that's pretty much it. This is the tall one and of course we also still have this one. Two Christmas trees, two bonsai. Hasn't cost me all that much. So there really is no reason for not doing this yourself. If you do make one of these yourself as well, I'd be happy to link to your video. So let me know in the comments if you're making one and share the location of the video with me. Keep growing bonsai. Merry Christmas and see you later.